how to get from a concept to a streamlined three-dimensional map in an efficient way. Let's get down to the steps. The first step is to find your location. Choose any spot in the world. Use our two different links from Contour Map Creator uh, or Axis Maps to gather your data. Your goal is to have two sheets, one of them being a reference map that you're not gonna be cutting, uh, but it should have your elevation layers, it should have a geographic location, so it should be a, a Google Maps of some sort, whether that have an overlay or if it's just Google Maps uh, with terrain turned on. And then you should have a map that's gonna be your blueprint. This could be from Access Maps or it could be from uh, the Contour Map Creator. I would say the Contour Map Creator gives you an easier way to replicate this. Uh, if you're gonna 3D print this or CNC router, then I would go with the Axis Map because it gives you a more exact, more concrete uh, topographical line set. Once you have this printed on your sheet, make sure you indicate what layer or what elevation changes for every line on your map. In my regard, it's gonna be a 10 foot uh, elevation change as it progresses up the map of Sherwood. The next step is to get your glue application demonstration checked off by your teacher. This demonstration uses a certain type of glue cap uh, and the whole goal is to provide a outline of these without putting too much glue onto any one surface. If you put too much glue onto your map surface, uh, it's going to create havoc when you're setting this all up uh, and trying to compress the layers. It'll just be too good. These are two different scaled maps of the same location, Sherwood, Oregon. Uh, and so to take the concept and turn it into the reality of a three-dimensional map, uh, you're gonna make sure the first step is to take your map and, and count down from the highest location uh, to find the lowest layers. And those lowest layers might be in multiple locations on your map. So you need to kind of find those. In this regard, just like in this map, my lowest location is to the north. Uh, there's 28 layers in here. And so my first layer is going to need to cut this chunk out, this chunk, this chunk, this chunk, and this chunk. So each one of those, those are all at the same elevation layer. So I'm gonna need to cut those out of my first piece. There's a couple of progressions here. So the first step for any map is to cut out your blueprint. Uh, so here we're gonna cut this out, take away that extra paper. And that gives us the outline. Uh, the next step, and there's kind of two folds, you can do either or depending on what you what you want to choose. The next step is to go and take your, uh, your blueprint and cut out that outer layer from cardboard. Uh, so you're gonna lay that down, trace that onto a piece of paper and cut it to the exact square or at least as close as possible. And you're not gonna cut one, but you're actually gonna cut two squares of cardboard. And we'll get to the reason why you need those two uh, in a little bit, but it really has to do with compression. So being able to take your map and, and sandwich it between two slices uh, to compress it down, uh, just like you would a sandwich or whatnot. So once you have these cut, take these aside. The next step is to kind of organize your blueprint. I'm gonna set this off to the side here uh, so that we can focus mainly on our blueprint here. So we've already counted this out. This is layer 28 for me. Um, so I'm gonna label each one of these 28. Uh, and then I'm gonna go to the next line. And what I would recommend is you go through and on each one of these, layer them, them down. Cause as you get tighter and closer up, you're gonna have multiple layers uh, as you go through here. So in this case, this is 28. This line would be 27. This would be 26, 25, 24, 23, and so forth. Now the reason, if you notice, this line stretches all the way around. So when you cut out line 27, you're gonna start on the edge and cut that whole line 27 out. Now that doesn't mean that line 27 only stops there. You might have a line 27, a topography line 27, somewhere else in your drawing. So it might be beneficial to take some time and go through and mark down at least maybe your starting points 
of where these low points are. So I know this is a low point, so I wanna make sure these are set up. Um, I know this is a low point. This seems to be lower. Uh, so I wanna double check all these different pieces and I'm gonna look from each. So here, this is 27 right here. So I know this is 26, 25, 24, 23, 22. So you kind of see the progression there. Um, and you'll have all these different parts. Once you're done with that, uh, you're gonna start off with cutting the, the lowest level. So these 28 sections. Uh, cut those out or whatever yours is. Um, and you're gonna cut it out first from your template or your blueprint. And then you're gonna trace that onto some type of colored paper. Uh, and that's gonna be the progression from here on out. You're going to cut out a layer, layer 28 from the whole of your map, trace it onto here, cut that out, glue it on. Uh, and so let's get into what that looks like. All right, so there we have layer 28 all cut out. I'm gonna take this, transfer it onto the purple. And with that, I'll just take a pen and give me a rough outline here. And here's my first piece. So I'll transfer that next. All right, now this isn't definitely perfect. Uh, as you notice, I, I was having some trouble with some of the smaller holes, and I might go back and do a little bit of cleanup on some of this color. Um, I think I'd recommend, rather than using a pen, I'd probably use a pencil, because uh, then you can erase the extra piece and your final product will look a little bit cleaner and a little bit nicer. So once you're done with that first piece, now you still have some paper here. This is totally usable uh, and you sit, can save this because if you remember, you're gonna be doing alternating colors. So like for me, I'm gonna be doing purple and brown. Uh, yours might look a little bit different if you have multiple colors or uh, two or three or four colors, however many you wanna do. Once you're done with this though, you can set aside the other pieces and your goal is to then glue this down onto uh, your base. Uh, and so I'm gonna take this, this is my top. I'm gonna flip this over. I would glue along, along the perimeter of this with a nice thin line. I'm gonna do a little bit on the inside and then also around the edges here uh, so that I don't, I don't lose them. That's all you need, need the glue for. You do not need an ocean of glue. Once that's done, flip it over. Here's where that compression is. So get it lined up nice and neat. You might have some overlay with your, your cardboard and that's okay. Press it down. So that that absorbs. You would then take your other piece of cardboard, set it down and put your Chromebook on top of it or put something else on top of it uh, to provide weight. So whether that be a water bottle or something, something that you're compressing this down. Set this to the side, and then the next goal is to cut out line 27. All right, here's my next layer. As you notice, it, as you're starting off, sometimes it can cut out a big chunk right at the get-go. It really depends on uh, the slope or the distance in between each line. Uh, so from there, this would be my next trace. Uh, now I can't fit that onto my extra first scrap uh, and I'm gonna be alternating colors. So my next color is gonna be brown. So I would take this, trace it out, cut it out, and apply. 
Here's after tracing. Now, none of this is gonna be perfect. Um, the goal is to try your best. So each one of these lines, you, you are not gonna hit every single line. And if you mess up a little bit, uh, the goal is to be as clean as possible. And to be honest, this contour line is not a, the bee's knees of accuracy either. Uh, and so when you guys are looking at this, just understand that these lines are approximate. So that means your lines can be approximate, but the outline itself should be roughly the same. If you look here, as you can start to see, as I'm cutting down these layers, I think I'm on tw layer 26 right now, I just cut out. Um, you start ending up with chunks. So you have a piece here, you have low ground here, and then it goes up back up into a hillside here. And as you progress, as you keep on narrowing that the, the line or you're getting higher up in elevation, uh, you're gonna keep on cutting away different sections. So the next line would be 25 and that cuts around and it cuts up, it's starting to work inside here. And then pretty soon, once I get by tw like line 23 or line 24, uh, this whole thing will be gone. And then I'll have a chunk here, a chunk here, a chunk here. A chunk over here uh, and so it just really starts really getting more and more intricate as you progress